Uh, blind football has given me the chance to give me the confidence back from being sighted and also represent my country and go on to be a success for England. I'm Brandon Coleman, a future England playmaker. Um, I got into football in my home area. I played for a local team and just pretty much was just with a group of my mates just from just a bit of a hobby really, just getting into it. Lost my sight through a genetic condition called Labour's Optic Neuropathy. It was in May 2012 and it caused the optic nerve behind my eye to slowly deteriorate in around about a month and a half and then yeah that's how I lost it pretty much. Just like more the fact of getting around having to use a cane like the image of it like that was a hard thing like actually having to accept like the way maybe people may like look at me different if they were going to. Obviously I was low on confidence when I first lost my sight so I didn't start straight away. It wasn't my aim to start blind football when I first came. It was I just wanted to relearn what I'd learnt before I had sight and then I found blind football. So, uh, what blind football has done for me and my career? Uh, I think it's a better question to ask someone who's never represented the country because they never know that feeling. Um, the feeling of walking out, singing the national anthem, doing something just for everyone that you, you, know, you love and any of the people you just you respect you for doing what you do, is, it's just the best feeling in the world. Um, I, can, I think what I'm trying to say is if you've never done it, you'll never know and I can only just say that it's just, it's emotional, it's um, heartbreaking, it's fantastic. You know, I never get fed up of talking about it, as you can probably tell, because I keep going on. I'm Jonathan Pugh, I'm the England head coach for the senior blind squad and ex goalkeeper. My career started in, in blind football as goalkeeper um, when I was 18, back in 96, when uh, the game started to transition into a more of a, a serious sport. The rules had been sorted out, and they uh, they wanted uh, fully sighted goalkeepers to to play. Yeah, I think you know the, the progression of the game over the last 20, year, 20 years has been massively significant to the players. People coming to watch blind football to enjoy a game of football now. It's not about seeing 10, 9, 8 blind people running around and and just wow at the fact that they can run. I mean, blind people can run. <laughs> you know, they can they can talk funnily enough and they can kick a ball really well. And I think when you get to um, get to see a game at its truest form, in two good teams trying to win, hopefully we can progress more into the international stage and they've got a pathway to do so, play in the national league, play recreationally or get play represent your country. I mean there's no greater honour in my my in my book and I've done that. Um, People might say, yeah, but it was only with blind football, and I'd question them to say, what have you done in your life? And they, and they can't give me an answer. So, you know, I'm as proud as anything doing what I do, um, and it wouldn't be any different if I was mainstream or friendly sport. This is a blind football. It's a mimic of a futsal ball, but it's got little panels in and behind, and they've got little bits of rattles on there. So it's small, uh, it's heavy, and it's to keep the ball on the floor, and the emphasis is to uh, for players to have good ball control and skills instead of aerial ability. Jono. The ball for you. me when I used to play as a goalkeeper how do you 
let goals in against blind people? Well, for two reasons. One, that box doesn't help you, so you can't come out and try and close down the angle. But if you've ever faced a shot from a Dave Clark or a Brandon Coleman, you're more likely to try and get out of the way than try and get in the way of it, because it's hit like a rocket, and the balls are like bricks. Behind the goal, there'll be what we call a guide, an attacking guide. He stands in the centre of the goal, of the width, between the width of the goal, and he tries to give information, not to say what to do, because the players are, you know, they make their decisions themselves. He's not there to tell them what to do. We're there to give them information, like there's two defenders, one defender, the keeper's small, the keeper's on his left, just to make sure that they get the biggest picture they can use from the environment to get the best opportunity they can for scoring goals. Blind football has been an amazing part of my life. It has taken me around the world. It, it's enabled me to meet uh, new friends in all sorts of far-flung locations. But on the pitch, it's given me the opportunity to compete on a level, level playing field. In blind football, we've changed opinions, we've changed lives, we've changed complete cultures. And that's something I'm very, very proud of and something I'll never forget. My name is David Clark. I represented England and Great Britain 144 times and scored 128 goals at blind football. Well, when I was uh, born in 1970, it wasn't possible to play football uh, as a blind person for your local club or your school or your county and definitely not for your country. So for me, it was uh, playing football on the drive over my dad. I was born into a family of scousers who were crazy about football and football was like the most important thing in the house uh, and certainly uh, I took that on board very early. I was always conscious that you know I loved football and I wanted to play at the, the highest level I could but I was also conscious that th there was, wasn't any level to really play at so I suppose what it, what it demonstrates to people is the fact that you don't always know what the end goal is but if you do the work then you're ready to take the opportunity when it arises. The thing that football gave me outside of the football itself and the, and the sheer uh, competition of it all um, was just you know tremendous friendships tremendous experiences you know from walking along the Chinese you know Chinese wall to um, walking across the Berlin wall you know it's you know to play in all these different places and experience all these different cultures and and to be part of that and bring the game of blind football there you know, it's an incredible thing. And I suppose it was topped off for me um, when I went to Beijing and, you know, in a country where traditionally disability has been hidden away, to see 140 foot uh, billboards of, of, of overtly disabled people uh, was a phenomenal change in the environment in that country. And, and this is what dis disability sport does. It changes, changes lives. So now it's time for a look at some of the memorabilia, I guess, from my uh, from my career. And I suppose um, just a couple of things. Really, uh, this one is one of my uh, early England caps from the uh, European Championships we held at the Velodrome in Manchester. Okay, and the final uh, amazing item here. Uh, as I duck my head down and try and avoid the the light, you can tell this set this house is beautifully set up for a blind person. Uh, but it's the very important one, and the one that means an enormous amount to me and that is the, uh, the Paralympic torch and grabbing this from uh, the guy coming in off the, uh, the zip wire uh, from the orbit in the Paralympic opening ceremony and running this across the lady who did the cauldron was the most amazing thing and to feel the warmth of the evening and the warmth of that cauldron and to hear everyone cheering and for me to be there just meant to me and a lot of my friends that blind footballers arrived at the Paralympics. Uh, I suppose though the, the, the absolute biggest high for me personally, that was a team high, but the personal high for me was scoring my uh, first goal at London 2012, which was an equaliser against Spain. It was one of the better goals I'd scored and, um, and it was uh, just an amazing feeling to have all those people going crazy about the goal. Um, I got so excited I hugged the ref, which was uh, a little bit unfortunate, but uh, these things happen in blind football. Uh, but you'll never be able to put into words the feelings of what it means to represent your country at, at, at sport. If you love football and you and you want to become good at something or just enjoy something, football is a 
fantastic game. It's, I would say it's our nation's game. Um, and you'll have all the same trials and tribulations you have as, a, as any sighted kid who wants to go forward. You, you know, it's hard work. A lot of dedication is needed, but you know, for what you get out of it would far outweigh all the bad things. It's like a life changer. It's not something that just like, it's not like playing for like, obviously a team. Like when I was sighted, like just your local team, it's like a lot different. Obviously it's a national side. It can change your life and put you in pathways that like you cannot be put in for anything else. And it's given me a lot of confidence, I think. You know, um, it's very easy to sit on your backside and do not a lot, um, but it's not very uh, fulfilling. Um, and my advice to anybody who has the opportunity uh, to, as, as you do today, to go and follow the football pathway as a kid, yeah, get out there and do it. And if you're a parent, support it all the way.